numbers have started uh, our numbers have started coming down although now in Nevada we are seeing a little bit of an uptick uh, in some cases and so we are closely following that so uh, what I can tell you with assurance is that uh, we along with many other universities across the country have really decided based upon CDC guidance and our governor's directives and our Southern Nevada Health District we've really decided that it is safe to bring students back to campus uh, and we are really prioritizing as the CDC is uh, really prioritizing in-person learning uh, and we have not just made that decision lightly uh, it has really um, been based off of a lot of research and a lot of evidence that shows that uh, we can do that now and mostly because honestly the vaccine is now available and so um, we have seen dramatic results with the vaccine uh, and we know that folks who are vaccinated uh, really are incredibly protected from severe disease from COVID and from hospitalization and from death. And so um, the vaccine has been an incredible um, weapon in our arsenal uh, to really protect us all from COVID. And so um, that is one of the points I'd really like to encourage folks about. Uh, we have been offering COVID vaccinations since January uh, to the entire Las Vegas community, but our priority has been to uh, the UNLV community. Uh, and so we had a mass vaccination clinic that was open just until last month. Uh, and now the Student Health Center has taken over from that mass vaccination clinic because we really exhausted uh, kind of um, uh, the volume of folks who really wanted, at least at the onset, to be vaccinated. And um, so we were able to do mass amounts of people. And now that the numbers have become a little bit smaller and, and we've vaccinated a lot of folks, uh, we are able to now handle that volume within the Student Health Center. And so um, I want you to be aware that the vaccine is available. We have it available uh, for students if they have not yet been vaccinated. It is free of charge. It is. Um, it comes from the state and actually from the federal government, so it's no charge. Um, a lot of studies have been done on it, and it is incredibly safe and, as I mentioned, so effective. It's one of our most effective vaccines that we have ever seen, honestly. Uh, and so we have that available to students uh, by appointment. Um, they can call, and actually even prior to, if you are not yet a student, if you're coming new in the fall, uh, you can actually still receive that vaccine this summer. We are kind of including it in our group of pre-matriculation uh, immunizations, which means you don't have to yet quite be uh, enrolled and on campus. You can come in anytime this summer, call us and make an appointment. Uh, if you are already a student, you have access to all of our services. Um, if you're not quite a student, you can come in for the vaccine. And then as soon as school starts in the fall, you'll be uh, um, eligible to receive all the other services, which I'll tell you about in a little while. But um, the vaccine is available. We also have some Saturday hours that are coming up. The next five Saturdays, we'll be doing some walk-ins in our student health center from 3 to 5 p.m. Um, but if you have more specific questions, I can go through that with you all a little later. Um, but vaccination, 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 I really want to encourage all of our students to become vaccinated because, again, that will keep them the safest. Um, some of the other measures we've put into place are things like um, some plexiglass barriers. Uh, we are encouraging folks who are not vaccinated, of course, to wear masks. That's still the one of the best protections that you have uh, as per the um, Nevada guidelines uh, and the CDC guidelines. That's also very helpful. Um, and then we have a lot of hand sanitation stations available throughout the campus. Um, we have a lot of measures. We've spaced out chairs and created some distancing, even though now in the state of Nevada, they're really saying that if you're vaccinated, we do not need to maintain any social distancing. Um, we're still keeping some of that just as an added protection. Uh, and really, um, we have a lot of different uh, things that, that we have available, uh, including you know masks if someone doesn't have one, or if anybody has any questions whatsoever, you can always call the Student Health Center and one of our nurses would be happy to answer your specific question for your individual situation. Um, but we are continuing to follow this and we will be continuing to do that throughout the entire fall semester. So, you know, if things start to change with, with COVID, uh, we will be acting upon that, I can assure you, uh, quite immediately. Um, so we will be keeping our campus well informed. Our president has done an amazing job through the entire pandemic of continually sending out messages as well as our provost to keep our students updated on the situation. As we learn more or as things change, uh, we will continue to share that with the campus and make sure that we're available for any questions. Thank you so much, Kathy, for that great information. And uh, I'm sure parents who've joined us have questions, and we're going to get to your questions now. So if I could ask the panelists to 
Um, when we, we get to that next slide, Morgan, if you move us over to the question slide, just go through. Um, oh, we've got, oh, there we go. Thanks, Morgan. Um, you can go to the question. So uh, this one question came in, if a case is reported, will classes that had exposure convert to online? And uh, the answer to that is no. Um, you know, we have to maintain the privacy of folks and we're not going to be reporting that out. And Kathy, do you have anything else you want to say on that one? Sure. I think, again, this is a different situation than it was before the vaccine was available and when we had to move everything remotely. Now that we have the vaccine available, we know that folks who are vaccinated are very protected. Even if we had an exposure to someone who's COVID positive, we no longer need to quarantine. Uh, the measures are very different. Um, and what I would say is we also have a voluntary reporting system in place at UNLV. So if a student or a faculty or staff member uh, does test positive, we encourage them to voluntarily report that through our online system and then many folks can then jump in and try to help uh, provide resources and then we uh, are more than happy to help work with that individual student or faculty member to determine um, any potential uh, uh, contacts. We do contact tracing and then we also can give guidance in terms of do they need to isolate or quarantine at all uh, and when is it safe to go back to class. But I think our faculty have been incredibly receptive and responsive and very helpful helpful in helping any student who is ill, who is not able to attend classes, continue to keep up and to um, complete anything that's that's um, required or necessary or give an extension if need be. Um, I think as long as the student reaches out to their faculty, if that's the case, if they become ill, uh, we don't want folks coming to campus if they're ill. Uh, and we work with them as well to, to try and um, help their symptoms and improve, you know, improve how they're feeling so that they're able to return safely to campus. Terrific. Well, you covered a few of those bullets there, Kathy. Thank you. <laughs> um, the classes and capacity, um, the classrooms have been filled to their, their typical capacity. Um, so there may be an empty seat, there may not be, but again, as Kathy mentioned, as long as your students have been vaccinated, uh, that's the best protection for them and they will not be required to oh, wear a mask. Um, some offices may encourage it, uh, but it's going to be one of those optional things for our students, and no one's going to be uh, required to put a mask on. Um, we do encourage it uh, if the student feels like that's the best protection for them. Uh, in person events. Yes, as you heard, there's going to be a lot more in person events, and for those of us who work with students and serve students, we're very excited about that. So you can consider this fall uh, what, what the class schedule, the types of courses we're offering and the events to really resemble fall of 2019 uh, in terms of how we uh, delivered instruction and had uh, the university experience for our students. Uh, we have someone in, in uh, a grad program, I'd say your best resource to find out about the PhD program is to contact the graduate college and find out the status of your application. So um, certainly we could put you in touch with those uh, those resources as needed, but the grad college is the best resource and they can reach out to the program in physiology to find out the status there. And we have some moving questions, it looks like, and Heather is our expert in housing. So I'm going to pass it over to Heather to hit some of these housing and move-in questions. Okay, absolutely. Happy to help here. So the answer is now. Your student can send an email to housing at unlv.edu. And if they have a special request for any reason, they can send it in now. Traditionally, we would move in uh, first-year students the Wednesday before classes begin. But we did find that spreading it out um, went much better last year. So we're continuing to spread it out this year um, across those three days. So if your student doesn't know yet when their move in date is, encourage them to check their rebel mail. So a lot of these housing questions um, have already been sent to your student in their rebel mail, including what to bring, what not to bring. Um, we will have professional movers there to help you. So you can just pull up your car and let them do everything, uh, which is a lot of fun because it is going to be a warm day for sure. And then you can accompany your stuff 
um, upstairs mm -hmm. to your room and your family is allowed to go as well. So housing at unlv.edu, that's the email address um, that your student can ask for a particular date. And I just put housing and grad college in the chat, those, those email addresses. Uh, and then we've got a question about academic advising. So we're gonna let Cheetah take this one about incoming freshmen and questionable classes. Actually, Sheetal, I can I can jump in on this one since we had Perfect. I had I had put my name down. Um, okay. Just so it, okay, so um, how can students find their advisor? And specifically, this person was wondering about a, the freshman student who has several questions. So I'm going to put a couple of links in the chat right now. Um, three different links there. So for freshman students, we have dedicated first year advisors in each of the 11 college advising centers. So if your student is a freshman, they definitely would wanna connect with their specific first year advisor within their college advising center. Um, the second link I have is to meet the advisors. And the third link is to the advising centers. So those would be more for students that are beyond freshmen. Um, they can go and they can, find their major and find their college and contact their advising center that way. Um, some of the advising centers assign advisors based on various things, maybe the student's last name, they have a caseload split, or they assign an advisor based on the student's major. So the best place to go is to the advising center website, and that will give you a list of all the advising center contact information and reach out directly to your advisor and schedule that way. Thank you, Kaya. Next slide, Morgan. We have a few more questions. I can help out here with the welcome week activities that are going to be available. Just like we talked about in the beginning, there are a ton of welcome week events that actually go away into September. So yes, when your student moves in on the 17th, there's gonna be a lot for them to do, not just in their smaller floor community, but there will be a lot of people um, around in their entire complex. And we have a residence hall association that always plans a great welcome back festival specifically for the students that live in the residence hall. So. I think we have a variety of events depending on um, the community that your student is living in, or if they are a commuter student, there's a lot of events for them as well. Um, I think we might have lost Jeff. He might have frozen, so we'll just keep going here. Um, the first oh, thing. No, I'm here. Oh, good. Okay, great. I'll stop. Okay, so yes, first day of classes is August 23rd. Um, so put that down in your book and tips for on-campus students to make the most out of their first few weeks, uh, get themselves organized, set up a schedule, know where their classes are, and I'll see if Kaya or uh, Sheetal have anything else uh, to add to that one. There's a lot going on. Yes, indeed, we do have a lot going on. So one of the things I would um, add in addition to what Dr. Ojera just mentioned is, um, it's a really great opportunity for students to also get acquainted with some of the learning and academic support services that we have on campus. Um, during COVID or for the past two years, we've been offering these services online, such as tutoring, supplemental instruction. Um, so it's a really good way also for you to, for students to kind of engage in some of these learning support opportunities. Um, another really great one is academic success coaching as well, which is, um, is, you know, because the transition to college can be a little bit different, particularly this year. So they're also really helpful with how do you connect with other students in the classroom or connect with instructors. And um, I believe there's also involvement fair that is part of Welcome Week events. Um, if anyone else wanted to talk to that as well. Yes, that's right. We will have the involvement fair that um, where all the different clubs and organizations will showcase and talk to students. That's a lot of fun. And um, there's just hundreds of different clubs, uh, over 400 that students can join. And I would say at orientation, the question that always goes with this is the job fair. 
So there will be um, a job fair as well, and we have a great career services department where students could start searching now for online jobs as well. Thank you both. Uh, another vaccination question. I think we've covered this one, Kathy, but do you have anything other on the safety protocols for students who are unable to vaccinate but attending in person courses? Sure, that's a great question. And I think the first thing that I might just say is that there are a very a very tiny amount of folks who are not eligible for the COVID vaccination. It is incredibly rare that someone is not eligible. Uh, the only folks that really cannot be vaccinated are those who have an allergy to something in the COVID vaccination, and it's very, very rare. Um, you may have heard in the news some um, adverse events and side effects, and I can tell you that those are incredibly, incredibly rare. Uh, and so um, we can really help kind of dispel misinformation Information, or if you have questions regarding your own personal health um, or your students' personal health and you're not sure, please call us. We are happy to answer questions and, and really help you make an informed decision if you're still kind of on the fence or not sure if you can or should receive the vaccine. But honestly, almost everyone can receive the vaccination. Um, if for some reason, and that includes women who are pregnant, that includes folks who have uh, immune system deficiencies. In fact, those folks are more at risk of severe disease with COVID, and it's actually recommended for those folks to receive the COVID vaccine. Uh, but again, if you have specific questions, please call the Student Health Center, ask to speak with one of the registered nurses, or ask to speak to me directly. I'd be happy to talk with you. Um, we want everyone to make their best informed decision. Uh, but again, as, as far as the safety protocols, I think if you are not vaccinated, again, we follow all of the Southern Nevada Health District and the CDC and the governor directive so wearing a mask if you are not vaccinated is your your best uh, defense uh, at this point keeping distance you know not being hopefully um, in very very crowded spaces uh, you know as much as possible if you're not vaccinated um, and again staying home if you don't feel well uh, and we're telling everyone that so that's for the protection of all so that we won't have folks on campus you know potentially you know spreading any infection whether it's the covid or the flu or other things um, that that we may catch so i think that probably wraps it up thank you so much Kathy. Uh, i think we covered moving dates right and then we covered moving dates and and parents believe us uh your students, once they unpack their room, will have many options and opportunities to get to know their fellow uh, classmates and get involved in activities. And, and as hard as it is, and, and I'm taking my son, my younger son off to college uh, at the same time you'll be sending yours. And, and uh, I've been working in higher ed for many years. And I know after moving, give them a day or a couple hours and then get on out of there so that they could start transitioning and making friends and feeling confident. I mean, I'm not telling my son we're hanging out in the city for a little while just in case. So maybe you could secretly stay in town, but let him or her get settled. So um, lots of support there and just encourage them to stretch themselves. I see the question about what should second year students do? Because this will really be their first time on campus and they didn't get that real on campus experience and and we know how important that first year is so all the things that they were excited about doing last fall they should go out and do them this fall and i don't know if, if uh Sheetal or kaya have anything further on that but we encourage everything from go to career services start looking at internships get to know your faculty develop those relationships and there may be some other tips too Thank you, Dr. Ojera. Um, I would absolutely agree with all of that, which is this is their opportunity to really engage in a lot of the services that they didn't have um, during last year or their first year of college. Um, there are two other events that are taking place specifically for first year and second year students. There is UNLV Connect and also UNLV Bound for second year students that um, are in-person activities are scheduled every Saturday to help with that transition. Um, is there anyone else on the panel that might like to add more to that? Yeah, I'll just say that we're really excited to start meeting families and students this Saturday. So 
if you're wondering, like, how do I sign up for my, for my second year student or my first year student for these events? Just encourage them to check their rebel mail because all the sign up information is there and there's still a few Saturdays um, available. It's very popular um, as you can imagine, because students are so excited to come to campus, but um, they're welcome to come and um, sign up. And like I said, we're excited to meet everyone. Yes, thank you. Um, those are two great programs, both for our incoming students and our returning students, where advisors and folks from campus life and everyone will be there to um, support your students and get them get them set up for a great year. Oh, it looks like we have a, an important question too about dorm room bathrooms, Heather. Okay, so there's no toilet paper that is provided, but your student has a roommate, of course, as well as likely two suite mates that share a bathroom. So it's great. Um, your student will have gotten an email with their um, information. So they should definitely reach out to their roommate and their suite mates and decide who's bringing what. So you don't have a ton of toilet paper that arrives because um, storage is limited. So we don't want um, too much there, but um, yes, so there's a whole list of things in their email of what to bring and what not to bring. And I'm just gonna stick in the chat, um, the parents network information, because I can tell some parents may not be signed up for it to receive all the updates. So we try to give you little nudges about ask your student if they've registered for classes, ask their student if they've checked their email. So I'm just gonna stick that link in here for you as well. Thanks, Heather. And I just put in the last UNLV bound program and connect program is the 14th. But don't fear, parents. Um, it's not required. And the information that's covered in those programs is also covered in new student orientation. So as long as your student is connected to new student orientation, they will get that information. Okay, next slide. Morgan, do we have another? Oh boy, we have a, a huge questions about fish and meal plan. <laughs> Go ahead, Heather. Okay, so the technical answer is yes, your student can bring a fish, but of course we recommend that um, they really think long and hard about bringing that on the first day, because um, there's a lot of different things to consider. We have observed many instances at move-in where the fish don't make it, and so they're very sad to start. So. Um, we also get questions about cats and dogs and snakes and things like that. So all those other types of pets are not permitted. Um, the only exception is if a student has gone through the Disability Resource Center and registered there. So um, there's a big procedure that they have where the doctor approves an emotional support animal. So um, that's something to consider. So the, the answer is yes on fish, but um, they might just want to think about it. Uh, move in, I think we covered, because that will be in Rebel Mail, their scheduled move in time. And then the same thing for meal plan. All they need to do is email housing at unlv.edu, and I'll put it in the chat. And um, housing and dining are connected, so they can help you with changes to meal plans. And we've got about changing a class schedule and orientation program for transfer students. Yeah. All right, I will go first if that's okay, Kaya. Uh, we do have orientation for transfer students. Um, their experience does tend to be a little different. I'm sorry, I'm hearing a bit of feedback, so I hope all can hear me okay. Um, I, so their experience can be a little bit different from our incoming freshmen. Our orientation date, if your students have not already registered as a transfer student, I highly encourage them to do so. We do have an orientation specific day, um, sorry, an orientation day specifically for transfer students on July 20. 9th and then August 19th as well. It's also a really good way for them to get connected with their academic advisors so that we can make sure we're placing them in appropriate classes. 
คือว่าห้มที่ปกไม่กันโอเคแค่เพื่อการทรานสเตชันและแชทล์ถึงเรือไฟโอเค so we don't offer um, specific transportation to and from the airport but there is a great regional transportation um, program through the bus company so we do sell bus passes at the student union as well as the parking office and um, the airport is quite close to campus so we see a lot of students that take an uber um, or lift and then there are times where during the year their friends will have a car and so they arrange rides that way as well to and from the residence halls Question about microwaves and fridge. I would imagine that would be the housing email address again, Ms. Carter. Yeah, that's right. And your student did get a handbook in their email that tells exactly what they can bring and what they can't. It has the wattage for everything. So um, just ask your student to check their rebel mail. Okay, family day. We have a tentative date set for family day. I think that is right. That's right. We are tentatively set for October 16th, um, which is a Saturday. And what we have found is that a lot of families come in from out of town and kind of spend the weekend, but they love to do stuff in and around Las Vegas just for sightseeing and then, um, you know, trips to Target and that sort of thing with your students. I think one of the most fun things about Family Day is when we see the students taking their parents on tours of campus because they want to say here's where i have my freshman seminar class and here's where my english class meets and this is the place in the library where i like to go and study so it's just a really um, fun and exciting day we'll have brunch in the morning and then we'll have a football game um, in the afternoon kickoff is at four o'clock at allegiant stadium so we're all really excited to be in the 100 level of Allegiant Stadium to support the Rebels. Thank you, Harry. That's terrific. Uh, then we have a, a question about second year students. So is UNLV taking into consideration those second years who may be lost or unaware uh, as first year students due to remote classes? And I want to mention two programs. So some of you um, may have students that haven't registered for fall classes yet. And I want to let you know we're running uh, an incentive program called Revel Returns Incentives. And if your students register, uh, they could they'll be entered into a prize drawing to win Revel Cash Awards that they can use in the student union at the bookstore to make photocopies in the library. So please encourage your students if they haven't registered for classes for fall. Um, to do that so they can be entered in those prizes. We also have a, uh, a great prize that is a uh, VIP experience at a football game with President Whitfield in his suite at the stadium. So uh, lots of great ways to connect with the campus. So I encourage your students, if they're still on the fence and not sure about returning, uh, please have them reach out to their advisor their advisor could tell them about these incentive programs and how to make sure that they're part of them. And you'll also be receiving, or your student will, uh, emails about these programs between now and when classes start in the fall. But lots of yeah. opportunities to catch up from last year, definitely. And I'll just jump in too, Jeff, and just reiterate the um, UNLV Connect, the Saturday events. So that's definitely geared towards the second year students who were, you know, virtually learning last year, and that that would be a great opportunity if they're available to come on campus and hear from some of the different offices and as well as academic advising and take advantage of all those resources. Thank you, Kyle. That's great. And parking permits. Another question that I know Heather is probably aware of. Yes, yeah, so they're not quite available yet, um, but they will be in August and there's an awesome website where you can purchase everything online. So we'll put that um, in the chat. And of course, if you are in person 
You certainly can go to the parking office in person and purchase them as well. We just recommend you go to the website first so you know all of the requirements. And a lot of questions by all panelists. Uh, Morgan, do we have any more questions? Couple about residence hall. Okay, sure. Yeah. So traditionally, yes, students do stay together for the entire year so they can leave their things over winter break. We certainly recommend taking home anything valuable like laptops and things of that nature, but um, yes, most students do stay together for the entire year. Um, and then we'll, yes, you can start um, using their meal plan when they move in. If you have a student athlete that perhaps is moving in much earlier in August because of their practice schedule, um, athletics has set up something for your students that's separate from the meal plan, but in the dining commons usually. So for most students, um, yes. Um, they can start using their meal plan on arrival. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay, uh, Morgan, do you have any other slides? I think we had one on online learning. That we could quickly go through. So, uh, even though we're predominantly going back to in person instruction, um, these are just some good tips because even if it's an in person instruction, um, your students will be doing things online and submitting assignments online through our Canvas web application. So uh, make sure there's technology prepared and ready. Um, and it's really important to create a schedule and a dedicated study spot. Um, and know Cheadle and her team in the Academic Success Center talk a lot about you know creating a space for studying. So I don't know if you have anything else you'd like to add on that, Cheadle. Thanks, Dr. Ojera. Nothing in addition to what we already mentioned is that we do have academic success coaches um, to help develop student study skills to not just adjust to this in-person learning environment, which um, you know is different to what they've done over the past year, but also just to get acclimatized to the campus learning experience. Um, and I can also put in a link to our academic success coaching in the chat, should you all like to learn more information. Fantastic. Thank you. So at this point, we have just a couple minutes left because I want to be respectful of my yeah. panelists. Okay. Um, so if you want to unmute yourself or put any other questions in the chat, we'll do our best to. Uh, and Dr. Aguirre, I believe there was a question regarding student health and how students access services. Um, so maybe I can address that just really quickly and I'll put a couple of links also in the chat box uh, so that you're very welcome to look at those web pages. Um, but I just wanted to let everyone know that as a UNLV student, uh, you do have access to a full range of health services uh, on campus. Uh, it is part of your tuition and fees and so there are no charge for office visits to see a nurse practitioner or a physician or one of our specialists. So we offer a wide range of treatment of illnesses, injuries. We have a full laboratory on site. We have a full pharmacy on site. We have a registered dietitian who can help uh, with meal plans or if there's food allergies. Uh, and again, we have specialty services. We have a, a wide range of mental health services as well as uh, health services um, to really treat the whole person. Um, so please feel free to explore those links and let me know if you have any specific questions. Uh, we will also be here during those Saturday uh, UNLV Connect and UNLV Bound experiences at the end of the afternoon. Each Saturday our, serve, our center will be open. So even if you don't need or want a COVID vaccine, which we'll be offering, you can feel free to just come in and meet one, one of us and ask your questions. Um, we're happy to, to meet you and to talk, um, talk with you about anything that uh, might be on your mind. Thank you. This question just came into the chat about uh, how to transfer a prescription to campus health. Can you put that one? 
Sure. So it's it's actually quite easy. Uh, you can do it one of two ways. So um, this student can either go to the pharmacy where they're currently getting their prescription and ask them to transfer to us. Or what might be easier is once they're on campus, they can bring the bottle into our pharmacy and our pharmacist, pharmacist can do the legwork and they can get in touch with the Walgreens or CVS or wherever they might have been filling it prior. Uh, and we can get the, the uh, prescription transferred. So um, it's really very easy. Thank you very much. Uh, then and there's a question yes. about about 24 hour services. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, so um so unfortunately we are not open 24 hours a day. We are open Monday through Friday. Uh, but the good news is is that we also contract with the School of Medicine faculty and their physicians take call for us for all of our patients 24 hours a day, 7 days a week and on holidays. So uh, we have their phone number listed uh, on our website under uh, after hours care and it's also on our glass doors. It's on a lot of our voicemail messages. So if you know one of your students needs some care and it's a holiday or it's the middle of the night, uh, they can easily find that phone number. I recommend even before needing it to um, to get those phone numbers and put them in a safe place where they can access them if they need them. Our phone number, the after hours phone number, uh, so that they have that, um, but they have that available to them. Um, and then the other thing I would say, just as you're preparing to come to campus, um, if you do not already have this or you haven't done this is I do recommend also that you make sure that your student has a copy of a health insurance card if you have health insurance. Um, students do not need to have health insurance to access our services. So again, there's no charge for office visits. So we see everyone, whether they have insurance or not. But if your student does have health insurance, it's really important that they have a copy of that card just in case if our lab needs to do lab work or if they want to fill a prescription or they need a referral for an x-ray. We want to make sure we can utilize their insurance benefits if they have insurance. If they do not, please do not worry. We have a, an amazing social worker who also helps us with folks who are um, uninsured to really find places in the community uh, in case if they need to see a specialist or need an MRI or something uh, to really you know find the best deal for them or see if there's a you know any location that has a payment plan. Uh, we'll do anything we possibly can to make sure our priority is always that uh, your student receives the care that they need uh, and we'll work with with them. Even sometimes if they have insurance, we have a full time program officer who works with the students who have insurance because sometimes even that's confusing to figure out what's a deductible and what's covered and what isn't covered. And so we can work with with them on all of that as we all try to navigate uh, the insurance system. So, um, so please be aware of that. And if you happen to have a minor student who is not quite 18 yet, uh, we do need a parent's consent to treat a minor student. So if you have someone under 18 that will be coming to UNLV, um, please be sure to stop in the Student Health Center with them uh, so that we can have you sign a consent for treatment ahead of time. Um, if your student is 18 or older, um, I always let parents be aware and family members and, and, and support systems know that if your student is 18 or older by law, uh, we are not, their, their health information is completely confidential and so we are not allowed to share information um, with anyone except the student unless they give us permission to do so. And I know that that can be very hard as a parent um, if you are very concerned about your child uh, and you are not able to you know, receive health information, but I can assure you that we take very good care of them and we always encourage them to please be sure you're sharing information with your loved ones because they love you and they're concerned about you. So please keep them in the loop in, in your health care um, if they feel comfortable doing so. So we are always, um, you know, on your side and, and trying to keep that uh, communication open as well because we, we really want to, to treat them and allow them to be independent, but also we know that families can worry, um, but uh, we we have, like I said, an amazing team and, and we, we, we treat them with the utmost of, of excellent care and compassion. Uh, so I hope that that will um, bring you some reassurance in case if they need us. Thank you so much, Kathy. So uh, family, thank you so much for joining us. I see the chat. Uh, I just wanna let you know, some of you may have missed um, some of the earlier uh, links and, and we're re-putting those in. Uh, we're also recording this session and um, we can get it posted for you to make sure it's available. And I also put in an address if you're not sure where to start with any questions, student success at unlv.edu and we can get you connected to whether it's 
our Columbus Health Center, from housing to Heather to digital to advising, no matter what it is. So we want to make sure you and your students have all their questions answered uh, and know about all the resources and people that are here at UNLV to help them through this journey. So I want to thank my esteemed panelists uh, for joining us tonight and taking time away from their family and friends and other things uh, to, to share this information with you. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on campus in just a few short weeks. So uh, thank you very much all, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. Thank you.